Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to be diving into a fruit that I personally love, which is the supreme cutting power of the Choki Choki no Mi. The Choki Choki no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to morph seemingly any part of their body into a nice pair of scissors, capable of cutting through solid objects as if they were mere paper. This funky fruit was consumed by second in command of the G Army, faction of the revolutionaries being Inazuma, and first made its way to our attention during the Impel Down arc. In terms of etymology, Choki Choki just so happens to be the Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound of scissors snipping, which brings up that the word snip is our own English onomatopoeia for the same sound. And that is well reflected in the English translation translation with both Viz and Funimation opting to call it the Snip Snip Fruit. All right, now this is another one of those fruits that takes one specific concept and turns it into a truly ridiculous power. The basic idea is that the user of the Choki Choki no Mi is able to cut through any solid material. Although I would imagine that sea stone would be one of, if not the only exceptions to this. And that is simply incredible to think about, especially with our perspective on the series. I mean, for example, cast your minds back to the nostalgia days of the Alabaster Saga and think about the insanity that Zoro had to go through in order to discover the secret to cutting steel. Well, this devil fruit gives you that ability by by default, no enlightenment required. But I guess the key thing to remember is that this cutting must take place as part of the motion of scissors, which I would assume to be both blades touching a substance that the user desires to cut, rather than a single blade in the case of a swordsman. And so while the Choki Choki no Mi does offer an incredible perk in being able to cut essentially anything immediately post consumption, wielding these scissor blades is not going to give someone the same sort of versatility as a simple sword. So as much as it may be tempting to, we cannot refer to the Choki Choki no Mi user as any form of swordsman. No. They are a scissorman, and that comes with its own set of unique benefits. One amazing example of which that isn't explored all that much in the series to date is that the user can craft these scissors out of any part of their body. Now, generally, Inazuma will invoke his arms to be the basis of conjuring scissors. However, it could be done on a much smaller scale, like hands, fingers, or even toes. And yes, I guess the standard question after this is, well, can you turn your dick into scissors? La 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 la. And to answer that, well, obviously you can. Although I wouldn't recommend using it in the bedroom or any room actually, or even outside. You know what, just, just don't do it. In any case, while cutting is wonderful, this fruit also comes with another incredible secondary benefit that is almost never given any real focus or thought, which is that substances being cut by the user of the Choki Choki no Mi are able to be manipulated as if they were paper while the cutting process is active. Now this is just amazing because it's all well and good to be able to cut anything, but it's not a hugely versatile ability if the substance cut remains the same. However, for a select period of time, solid substances are subject to the laws of this devil fruit, meaning that if you were say walking down the road and there was a giant boulder in your way for reasons, then you don't need to go to all the trouble of cutting a path through it or whatever. You simply make one cut and then you move the boulder away with ease by extension of your paper prowess. Although you still take great care because while you can move the solid material around like paper, it does still retain its original density, which makes the Choki Choki no Mi a very potentially dangerous fruit in combat because you're not just up against a scissorman, you're up against the entire environment around you, which has the potential to work against you in a wide variety of offensive maneuvers. It's almost like a typical Paramecia awakening actually, just significantly worse because the effort put into cutting and controlling needs to be pretty tip top. And to examine that, let's have a look at exactly what that takes with Inazuma. Now Inazuma, whilst a minor character in the series, is still essentially a superhuman. He is powerful, fast, and a generally accomplished combatant, which is shown through his flex of almost always holding a glass of wine whilst engaged in battle. And to be perfectly honest, I think that Inazuma makes using this fruit look easy. He was capable of making crazy quick cuts and sending a whole environment of hurt towards Magellan during the Impel Down escape. And I don't think that your average user would have the speed to make these cuts in the first place, let alone the mental capacity to send so many separate substances flying in the very few seconds that Inazuma had to make that desperate attempt to stop Magellan. Not only that, but Inazuma is more or less a genius with this fruit in general, as he has also been able to put it to use for the purpose of preventing poisonous attacks, as well as a method of transportation for Luffy to reach the execution platform during Marineford, which directly led to freeing Ace, which I guess also directly led to the, uh, the death of Ace. But that has nothing to do with scissors, I think. In any case, let's turn to the wonderful world of awakenings. And first up, I have to go back to what I alluded to before in that it's entirely possible that this fruit has already been awakened. And that is how Inazuma is able to apply the properties of paper to substances that he chooses to cut. And I just say that because it does appear to maybe fit the accepted effects of Paramecia awakenings that we've seen thus far. However, I personally don't think that this is the case. I feel like everything I've mentioned thus far is what you would get straight out of the box when consuming this fruit. I also feel like it ignores the basic principle of the fruit, which is to be able to cut things. 
things, rather than what extra benefits allows those solids to be cut. So instead, as ridiculous as it sounds, it may be more reasonable to assume that the user would be able to turn their environment into extra pairs of scissors, capable of being manipulated by the wielder of the Choki Choki Omi. Some other things to consider when becoming a scissor human. The Choki Choki no Mi, while being wildly useful, does have a very important weakness to keep in mind, which is that it is completely ineffective against non-solid substances. This would leave the user of this fruit in the One Piece world quite vulnerable to a whole host of other abilities, one of which was demonstrated in the highly unfavorable matchup between Inazuma and Magellan. One of the more obvious and wonderful real life uses of this fruit would apply to the art of sculpting. A keen artist would be able to craft works out of any material they saw fit, thus potentially revolutionizing art history as we know it. Another fantastic and arguably more practical use of the fruit would be to apply the Choki Choki no Mi to the world of mining. And while it wouldn't be as effective as a gigantic environment destroying corporation, the user of the fruit could act as a one man strip mining team. Also, this might be a pretty useless idea, but the Choki Choki no Mi may be one of the very few powers in this world that is capable of destroying a Poneglyph. These stones have always been heralded as indestructible. However, unless they are made with an element of sea stone or something along those lines embedded, then I see no reason why the user of this fruit would not be able to slice them up like everything else. Once again, I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to, but you know, you probably could maybe. I mean, I guess it would be particularly useful if you were working for the world government, because then you could just destroy the true history of the world for all future generations. <laughs> also, right? Rather interestingly, I'd like to point out that Inazuma has never actually been shown transforming his arms into scissors in the series. They just appear and disappear off screen, sometimes with a sound effect. And as a result, I can't give you a solid answer on what that process is like. You know, what does it look like? How long does it take? All of these questions and more will need to be answered by you upon consuming the fruit. So in the end, I think what we have here is a pretty amazing fruit, heavily underrated within the fan base, and I blame the fact that we always focus on the scissor aspect rather than the being able to manipulate solid substances part. There are a near infinite amount of possibilities that exist to pretty much any person in this world in regards to this fruit. It can be used practically in day-to-day -day life, artistically, and for the more fighty amongst you, even in combat. Who would have thought that a simple pair of scissors could do all of that? Clever little things they are. However, as a result, I'd be a fool not to recommend this fruit to just about anybody. Eat it and be merry. And with that, we are going to commit the Choki Choki no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time, we are going to be looking at things on a much larger scale by examining a fruit that has been called the most powerful Paramecia and has been fabled to hold the power to literally destroy the world, the Gora Gora no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Choki Choki no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Do you think Luffy will ever fight Shanks? Like, an actually fight? I'd have to say no. I mean, well, here's the thing. Right now, I think that Luffy recognizes that he will have to come into conflict with Shanks and the Red Hair Pirates in order to become the Pirate King. Luffy has overtly stated that he will need to defeat all of the four emperors sooner or later, and Shanks is certainly one of those. It's a bit actually a lot more vague in regards to whether Shanks holds that same view though. I'm not so sure that he does because he's always talking about meeting Luffy and how Luffy will be ready to meet him soon. And that doesn't necessarily mean like meet him in combat. I think it's actually far more likely that as Luffy progresses, Shanks is commenting on Luffy being able to fulfill his promise and return the straw hat by becoming a great pirate. But the main reason why I don't think they'll ever fight is because I believe that Shanks is going to be killed before that moment of meeting between him and Luffy can happen, probably by Blackbeard. And I could go on with these thoughts for an awfully long time. And in fact, I should probably get to work and just make a whole video on this topic rather than keeping it here in Question Corner. As an active member of the Grand Line Review Discord server, I wonder, what are your thoughts about the Grand Line Review server? So the Grand Line Review Discord server is easily the greatest server in all of existence. And I don't just say that because I own it. In fact, it has nothing to do with me at all. It's all about the members who have forged that server, the relationships they've built, and how everyone is willing to come together to form a wonderful online community. I mean, there's even a channel on this server designed to help people with their homework. How wholesome is that? 
Plus, we also have one hell of a moderation team who put their heart and souls into the day-to-day -day running of the place, and I can't thank them enough for crafting one of the greatest retreats that the internet has to offer. And with that in mind, you should all go to the link in the description below and join immediately. Do you egg? Why, yes. Yes, I do.